Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some peace out to the rest of you. Black heart of sign, I'm black in again. And I probably should not have started with that greeting because I may curse before this thing is over. I'm gonna try not to. Brothers, um, hit that share button, please. Sisters, if you subscribe, hit the share button. Because the message is more important than the messenger and I do not seek the fame nor can my family afford the fame. So my face and name are not exposed, but the message is. I'd like for this message to be shared, spread, digested, and acted upon. But unfortunately, this message is not, it's not very flattering. I wish that it could be, but a lot of times they're not. This is a sad realization to which I came recently. In light of everything, many of us have uh, more recent memories, but my memory tends to be longer. And I remember patterns because I studied and then later taught history before I came to this country. And sometimes I find myself still teaching history because patterns of human behavior pop up again and again, they recur. They show themselves in history. When um, I was getting ready to uh, finish my vacation in uh, 2017, I left the United States and I was coming back uh, to start work coming back here to where I live and work and as I was doing that um, something became plain to me and that thing that became plain to me was this uh, if I had been in any other ethnicity but everything else about my life was the same equal height weight education looks all that um, I would have had a much different life experience with regard to women completely different I would not have been as ill-treated while watching other brothers get treated better um, I would have been uh, less I guess you could say less damaged overall I probably would have had a healthier expectation and been more optimistic about marriage and relationships in general I couldn't have it because my experiences would not allow it. That's not all. This gets worse. It gets a hell of a lot worse. But I'm not going to go into all of that. What I am going to say, though, is that on the way back, when I had to stay a night in a major city in the U.S. Uh, before flying out to the port of exit and then flying out of the country, uh, I was waiting at an airport for the uh, the hotel shuttle to come and there were two women one not attractive the other one attractive to look at and there was a very very um, clear-cut um, Difference in their demeanor and I could have told I could have told you what the attitudes would have been right off the bat If I had approached the unattractive one, she would have been open to it If I had even asked the attractive one for directions she would have been short and dismissive because she's attractive and when I say this, many of you would say, well, that's just how the game goes. Um, yeah, it does. And that right there, that right there is reason enough that responsible men who find that they are considered and treated like they're attractive in other cultures should not ever approach sisters. Western sisters. Never do it. It's not because sisters are by nature unattractive. It's because they just think that if they're the least bit attractive they should be repelling every man except of course the top 13 and 14 percent the 666 he must have six-pack abs be six foot six inches tall and he must have a six-figure salary and that's if I'm just the least bit attractive because if I'm the least bit attractive anything less than all of these things from him uh, means that he is beneath me so, what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to leave pretty much every black man uh, dating below his own SMV or marrying below his, below his own SMV if he's going to keep it with the sisters. I'm meaning the Western sisters. And I've heard that some brothers in the continent face the same thing. And if that's the case, they're going to have to step out too. But anyway, let me say this too, though. On the Rizal, y'all. What I wanted, what I recorded this to say, what it's taken me about 
five minutes and some 15 seconds to get to was this. It's a sad realization, but when April Mason went to bat for her cousin, she was doing what a cousin would do, especially a black cousin. I'm not gonna fault April Mason for that. Now, I could correct April Mason on her expectation that male platonic black friends are gonna come out the woodwork to stay on her couch and in a spare bedroom to make her feel safe, when in fact it wasn't even her that was chased, it was uh, her cousin that was pursued, so to speak, according to the report. I could correct her about that, but not about her defending her cousin and saying, look, she should be safe. Not about that. But we now we know that the evidence on video does not corroborate her report. I'm not asking April Mason to throw her cousin under the bus in front of us because this is a family thing. She can handle that with a cousin privately. But I'm going to say this to April Mason and everybody else too. I know the damn game. And I thought about this earlier, but I wasn't going to jump to this conclusion until, of course, there was evidence that, to back up what I was thinking at the time, which is, no, she didn't report this accurately, and she may have made all of it up, but she certainly did not report it accurately, even if she did feel afraid that somebody was pursuing her. To be fair, if her cousin was going through this and she did not have time to call a bunch of relatives, why did she call Miss Mason? If she didn't call Miss Mason, even though Miss Mason has a platform in which she generally defends brothers. She called Miss Mason because Miss Mason has a platform in which she generally will defend brothers. Do you get it now? You see, what's going on now with Western black women is this. The ones that will not attack black men categorically are being attacked by the others. When a demographic begins to attack its own members that will not attack another demographic, that demographic is about to fight a war with the other demographic. Her cousin is part of a camp that is going to jump on black men and say they ain't shit and God damn it, they want other black women to do the same thing. And if they could not bully or embarrass April Mason into changing her tune, they were going to try to deceive her into it. That's it. So April Mason has to deal with a treacherous family member that would try to get her to change a platform she built and change her stance based on something that was not, actual, was not actually the case. Maybe she got followed for a little while by a car. Maybe she was nervous about one of them guys in the circle, okay? But she was not followed when she got into the Uber. They weren't that doggone aggressive. And Sister Mason rightly got up and said, look, our women need to be safe. I understand Sister Mason being concerned for her cousin. I don't think that April Mason was in on these lies. In all honesty. But what we got to understand is that the black women who in fact are allies or who even just want to be fair about this are going to be attacked either overtly or by deception. So, in other words, they're being fought a war against. That ain't fair to them. That ain't fair to us. But why are they being either deceived into changing their tune or being pressured to change their tune and, and in all cases to be more hostile against us, the Western black man? Because they at war. And the ones that won't join this war are identified as traitors. That's why. That's the reason. So, brothers, I'm sorry to say this, but we didn't. This is I'm saying that we're at war. It's not something I wanted to be the case, but I see it now. This is clear. You see, Atlanta is a place where people theorize about conspiracies and later on they're proven to be true. That's what Atlanta is. I know because I lived there almost I lived there 19 years. Almost all my adult life minus 20 months. I live there. And when it's gotten worse, progressively, worse and worse and worse. And in all honesty, one of the things about Atlanta is that the women there on, on average are far better looking than they are in other parts of the South. That's the proof, not the truth, but the proof. 
Boy, them Atlanta women are, are they nice to look at. On, especially when you compare them to other places, but even still, man, them attitudes are just out there. They pretty much have their minds made up that if they're not ugly, they're not ugly, they're much better than you will ever be, black man. You're inferior. You'll never, you'll never be what they really want. And I watched ATL, and I saw the episode where this lady, uh, the main character's uh, somewhat girlfriend's friend married to a uh, well-off white dude out in the suburb somewhere, was unhappy with him. But she was going to stay with him for that money. And I, I kind of got it. But now I see that that actually was not very accurate. They're happy with the white dudes that ain't got the money. But you, black man, you'll never be enough. They're simply trying to goad us into, because they're in a war with us, they're trying to goad us into starting a physical war and getting ourselves wiped out because they think they just gonna walk up and inherit Miss Ann's everything. That's what it comes down to. They think foolishly the white men will fight to the death for their women. If that was the case, they wouldn't have been fighting us. They'd have been fighting each other and wiping each other out and actually fighting to the death. No, they were fighting us because they didn't have to fight to their own death. They were just fighting to our death. And this is a, a result of thinking, mistakenly, what I said earlier, that everybody else has their stuff together except us. That's not true. Because of this mistaken concept, um, that we have Sapphire has decided that she's a war with us she hates us and she's going to try to goad us into a war with somebody else to get ourselves wiped out so that she don't have to because Sapphire has shown even before she became Sapphire in the Americas that she will do anything to resist except get in their faces in many cases and when they do get in their faces the rest of them say why don't you leave that to the men because they're at war with us and not with the enemy. I hope that this has been a benefit. Hope that one day it won't be true anymore. Assalamu alaikum. Black horse sign of blackout.